<coughs> so as I mentioned before, embedded within the software program is an open source OCR engine called Tesseract, and you can see the code for it there. And in this case, you, you search or you, you limit the, the view of your specimen to the label, you run the OCR, and the OCR will do its best to, or the engine will run, do its best to generate text based on the image. Um, and then you can cut and paste from this text here into the appropriate fields. Um, there's a new feature associated only right now with the lichen and bryophytes data portals that um, automatically parse the data into the proper fields, if it can. Um, and I hope that functionality will be available to other the groups soon. Um, but right now it's only lichens and bryophytes. Um, likewise, if you happen to have maybe a, a better functioning OCR engine, maybe a proprietary one that produces better results for you, you can in parallel upload the OCR text to your database and use that a means by which you can um, search the OCR text for all of the collections that have the name Wilbur Smith in them and then transcribe from the label images all of those Wilbur Smith labels so you're always looking at the same label um, format and you can uh, transcribe collection data much faster. And then a third way by which you can capture data from the specimen images is to recruit the public. Um, people who don't know anything about your collections but are interested in helping out. Symbiota has a means of recruiting, or has a crowdsourcing application. The, the behind the scenes of that is that uh, you select a, a parameter, a query your database for a particular parameter, and then based on that theme, say I, wanna, I want the public to capture the specimen data for all my Wilbur Smith collections, you query your database for Wilbur Smith and then you present to the public all of those labels and ask them to capture the data from the images. Of course we don't want them adjusting anything that we don't, that uh, would ruin our database including the catalog numbers and scientific names, we only want them to, to capture collection information or locality information for example, you can lock all of those fields so only certain ones are editable. Um, and that's a really helpful feature especially when so many of us need to digitize it as quickly as possible, recruiting the crowd and people who you would never expect to be interested in, in capturing data really are. Another nice feature that Symbiota incorporates are georeferencing tools, web-based georeferencing tools. So in addition to supplying all of the, the Darwin core georeferencing fields, it allows you to georeference one specimen at a time, which is nice, by linking to the web instance of geolocate so you can figure out what are the geocoordinates for that specimen that you're looking at, and John will go into great detail about georeferencing soon. Um, and then otherwise you can georeference in batches, so regardless of the taxon, regardless of um, which collection it came from, you can search your database for all of the collections that have the same locality and georeference many at the same time, and this tool allows you to do that too, and there's a web tutorial for you that goes step by step how one could do that. So to give you an idea about how Symbiota might fit within the context of a, a rapid digitization workflow, which is, is tending to be more common now, you can try and do more with less money and faster. Um, you have, for example, an herbarium database that submits to a Symbiota server and any existing data, and at the same time capture images for which there is no data. Capture the image and capture minimal data, including the scientific name and the barcode number, that unique identifier for that specimen upload both of those items into the FTP server, which then get linked together and then are distributed to all the members of the portal so that they can transcribe all of the data from the images, no matter which institution they're from or from the crowd, if you like. In parallel to that, you can have people running the OCR on it and try and utilize the OCR engine when the labels are typed and can be OCR read, which is really nice. And some, of course, will be, have to be hand transcribed, but that's okay. And then once the data has been captured, it's delivered out to the portal for all the end users and likewise repatriated back to the institution if they should have uh, their own institutional database. And likewise, um, Symbiota, the, the images are URL based too, so the images are on the server along with the data, so you have to have uh, everything's on the server. So if any of you are, are considering this as an option, you really have two. Um, one is to join an existing portal this, the instructions for which are extensive, really easy to follow. There's no cost for you. Um, you follow the instructions and you upload your data. You make sure your data is in Darwin Core format. You supply all the images and you're done. Um, and your data is available through a portal. But that raises the question, what, which portal could I join? 
right now, Symbiota has what I counted eight active portals, um, all of which, maybe save for one, are North American based. So that doesn't leave you many options. Um, although they're, they're relatively broad in terms of organisms, they're narrow in geographic scope. So what you might want to consider is collaborating with several other institutions, be they regional or um, continent-wide, um, establish a new portal. So if you have the, the staff, the IT support the, and, and knowledge, you can host the server and supply the, skill, uh, supply the option to all of the other institutions that may not have the, the means by which to, to host the, the portal but want to contribute and want to display their data online. So the cost for this, because it's server-based um, and running on a MySQ, MySQL platform, you have to pay for server setup if you don't already have it, server software, portal setup, um, and then any ongoing maintenance and support for this. This is not a, a database that will die after a couple of years. It needs to be a, a living organism that grows. Um, so as I said, it's better for the creation of regional flora faunas than, um, and the integration of several biodiversity data sets. So to show you again um, a diagram of how, how this looks, or how it could work for you. You'd have smaller collections which could mail their collections to other institutions that have the imaging capabilities. And this is for rapid digitization. If you wanted to transcribe your labels one at a time into the database, that's, that's totally fine. If you wanted to do it faster and participate in a rapid digitization type workflow, you could send your specimens or your images to someone else who could, or send your specimens to someone else who could photograph them or digitize them. They get saved to the server and then Again, everyone can access the database through the, through the portal, capture all the data, etc. So as John mentioned earlier, the three primary considerations you want to think about when Symbiota, when thinking about Symbiota is does it meet the needs of your data capture workflow? It depends. Um, does it satisfy your specimen data management needs for the long term? If you don't have access to the MySQL backend, it could be difficult. Um, it doesn't really do that much for you. Um, and does it allow for the sharing of specimen data on the web? Definitely. So even if you were to capture a snapshot and present it to the public, uh, it, it would be better than to not have your data accessible at all. So thanks to Town, um, there are, is a, a great presentation delivered by the lead developer of Symbiota who ha will explain everything in much better, better language than I have and in greater detail. Um, so you can find the, the videos, which is in, it's an hour long video, so it's in four parts here and then several other resources that you'll find informative and helpful, including the Symbiota homepage again, um, the list of Darwin core fields, the, the schema for, uh, for Symbiota, and then a, an Excel template or a, a comma separated value table that would help you in the input of your data to Symbiota. <coughs> an institution, uh, in, an NSF funded institution in the United States has tried to aggregate all of the information about specimen digitization regardless of organism and so they've analyzed a lot of the uh, existing databases and have done a really good summary of what Symbiota has to offer and the pros and cons of it. Um, and then if you are considering using Symbiota, the Macrofungi Collection Consortium has published a 125 page document of their rapid digitization workflow from beginning to end um, that might help you even, even if you're not interested in going with Symbiota. And likewise other documents there. <coughs>